in previous videos, you learned about conditional probability and the law of total probability, and now you're going to put this information together, together to learn about Bayes' theorem. All right, so let this be a set of events, a one through a n be a set of events that partition s our sample space. So remember what partition means. It means that the union of all of these events is equal to the sample space, and no two of these events overlap. All right, so if we have any event b defined on our sample space um, where the probability of b is positive, then we can calculate the probability of aj given b is equal to the probability of b given aj times the probability of aj. And then in the denominator, we have the sum from i equals 1 to n, the probability of b given ai times the probability ai. So this is true for any j from 1 to n. OK, so what is the proof here? If we look at our numerator, we can see that this is the intersection. This is the probability of b intersect aj. So we have probability of b intersect aj. And then in the denominator here, this is the law of total probability. This is the probability of b. So we have the probability of b intersect aj divided by the probability of b. That's just our definition of conditional probability. So the probability of aj given b. So this is our proof for this thing called Bayes' theorem. OK, so now that we understand how this theorem came about, let's actually use it to calculate some probabilities. So imagine that we're thinking about a rare disease that only 0.1% of the population has. And we have some test, and if we use this test, then 95% of people with the disease will get a positive test result. So that seems pretty good. Most of the people with the disease will get a positive test result. And then if um, we have people without the disease, 90% of them will have a negative test result, which again seems pretty good. OK, so imagine that you test positive. What is the probability that you actually have the disease? So here in this probability, we're saying, if you have the disease, here's the probability you get a positive test result. And now we're saying, if you test positive, what's the probability that you actually have the disease? So we're going to use Bayes' theorem. So let's define some event events. Let's have A be the event that you actually have the disease, and B be the event that you test positive for the disease. Then we can use Bayes' theorem to write the probability that you have the disease given that you tested positive for it. We can write it as the probability that you test positive for it given that you have it times the probability that you have the disease. And then down in the denominator, we have the total probability of testing positive for it. So how could we test positive for it? We could either test positive and have the disease or test positive and not have the disease. So here's the probability of testing positive and having the disease. And then here's the probability of testing positive and not having the disease. So we need to find these probabilities so we can plug them in. So first, we just need to translate these statements into these probabilities where we have A and B rather than a whole sentence. So we need the probability of B given A. That is the probability that you test positive given that you have the disease. Earlier we said that's 0.95, so probability of B given A is 0.95. All right. Next thing we need is the probability of B given A complement. And what does that mean? That means the probability that you test positive for the disease given that you do not have the disease. Earlier we said 90% of people that do not have the disease will test positive. So in other words, if 90% who do not have it, sorry, 90% of people who have it will test negative. So that means that 10% of people who do not have the disease will test negative, or in other words, 0.1. And then here we have the probability of um, actually having the disease. And we said that 0.1% of the population has the disease, so probability of A is 0 0.001. Now we can go ahead and plug those numbers in, crunch it out, 
and it comes to 0 0.00094. So let's think about what this means. The probability that you actually have the disease, given that you tested positive for it, is only 0 0.00094. So if you test positive for this disease, it's actually very unusual that you would have it. So this just kind of highlights the difficulty of testing for rare diseases because, in other words, you're going to get a lot of false positives. Testing for rare diseases is just hard.